Some people take the straight path in life. But at Arizona State University, we respect your twists and turns. They make our online students more driven to excel in their professional lives. That's why our personalized suite of services empowers you with innovative resources and staff that sticks with you. Make your next turn with one of our 300-plus programs at ASU, a top 10 university for online bachelor's programs. Tap to learn more or visit us at asuonline.asu.edu. Looking for a new career? Welcome to Do HVAC Training Service Center in North Charleston. Enroll today in our comprehensive HVAC training hands-on field experience-based program covering troubleshooting, maintenance, installation, and more on various HVAC systems and ductwork. We offer EPA and NAIC preparation and testing along with various certifications. Enjoy payment options. Achieve certification in under five months. Enroll now for your new journey of skill development and career advancement. Log on to DEWHVACTrainingSC.com to inquire hey what's going on everybody this is joe biggs and guess what this time and you know who it is when i say we but this time we're not going to be wearing the colors that you're used to seeing us in nope this time myself and other leadership have decided we're going to go incognito we're going to be blending in weaving in and out like a motherfucking old lady with some goddamn pins in her hand making a goddamn sweater you ain't gonna know who the fuck it is standing beside you it could be antifa it could be me How creepy would that be? <laughs> I know, right? To have Joe Biggs of the Proud Boy standing next to you with curlers in his hair, a set of knitting needles, making you a sweater. Yeah. I mean, this goes to the very heart of what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still on Jan 6. Yep. We're doing Jan 6 Part 2. Yeah, it, there could even be Part 3. There is so much going on, but I, I also, we need to discuss that Part 3 could be a couple of months away because Ooh. some new evidence, which we will talk about today. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But wait, let's, the dumpster fire I is know. burning. Let's just leap in and get burnt ourselves. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I like that analogy, but sure. Let's go! You're listening to I Spy, the incognito seditionist of Australian intelligence. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing my koala suit. Give money to koalas. Support Trump or I'll kill you! All right, calm down. Hello and welcome to I Spy. My name is Michelle Stevenson. I'm here with David Callan and so much to unpack. As we record, we just had the fifth public hearing into the violent attacks on Capitol on Jan 6. Now, there's so much that happened. We had the behind closed doors interview with the director of the Trump doco, yep. Alex Holder. Yep. Apparently, there's some explosive footage from him. Oh, yeah. Um, so, we'll talk about that a little bit. Also, new documents from the National Archives. A flood of new tips have come in. Loudermilk, the tour of the White House the day before the insurrection. Now, this one was a good one. Yeah, and it, 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 that one, I like the fact that we had a parallel of that when, oh, I can't remember who it was. Was it Pauline Hanson or Malcolm Roberts took a couple of people from the protests outside the Australian yep. Parliament? The only problem was there was no one in Parliament House at the time and nothing was going on. Yep. But, I mean, what's really, really interesting about all of this is raids have started. The FBI, have, so DOJ yes. started raids so on various people. The Department of Justice is uh, kind of under the microscope, I would say. Not, so. I mean, not so much... They, they didn't seem to do a lot wrong, but there were elements of the DOJ that are being looked at quite closely. Definitely. But also, I like I do hearken back to our last episode where I say the DOJ are doing the right thing by taking their time. Yep. Let Congress get yep. all this information out and then they can go down for the deep dive yes. investigation straight up. And my favourite part is the Republican members of Congress requesting pardons in the days after the riot with an email sent with a list of them. And yeah. I'm sorry, but if you're requesting a pardon, yeah. you're pretty sure you've done done something wrong. When Donald Trump's lawyer <laughs> said, oh, I think I might need a pardon too, yeah. and nothing's already, no, there's no investigation happening already. It's like, yeah. dudes, guys, you know you've screwed yeah, up. Yeah, Rudy Giuliani basically sent a message going, "Um, is it too late for me to get a pardon? <laughs> Poor Jared. Every time he thought he'd got the pardon list done, he had to add another congressman to it. I know, but, but also the Proud Boy stuff. The Proud Boy stuff. Now, let's start with the Proud Boy yeah, stuff. Yeah, let's get into that first. Really, really interesting about that. It's a New York Times video, and I'll post mm. it on the uh, Twitter feed at I Spoke Podcast. And the whole thing is they basically ran it as a military operation. And yeah. the, the way they did it was they target access points. Mm -hmm. They get to the – and th th there's footage – you get to the access point and there's just people going, you know, Trump, Trump, we like mm. Trump. And then the Proud Boys show up and then they roll the crowd up. Yep. Right? And you're seeing guys getting – Joe Biggs was giving instructions to underlings to go over and start pushing the fences and yep. abusing the cops. Right? Rile it up, get the violence going, join mm. in the violence. And once it was really bubbling over, 
the Proud Boys all backed out. And you watch the video footage, they're leaving with in what's called a stack up where you basically put your hand on the shoulder behind in, of the guy in front of yep. you and that way you all trail your way out. The first person who gets through the crowd drags everyone behind. So they're doing these So it's like it's like a it's like a really aggressive Congo. It was yeah, it, <laughs> It's what we like to call like a SWAT Congo. A SWAT like, Congo. A SWAT Congo. Okay. So basically I had- Is it really in- called that? No, that's Okay. Right. <laughs> I was like, that would have been great. <laughs> it would have been really awesome if they did that. But you know what? SWAT would just go, shut up, Callan. Yeah. Like, Frosty, you're an idiot. Right. So the whole thing is they were using basically military tactics. Yeah. To get, they were finding the weak points. They were just constantly finding weak points and adding pressure to it mm. until they were in there and using things like Telegram and you know WhatsApp to contact each other. There's one point where you've got Joe Biggs on the phone and he's inside the capital going, you know, Noel, where are you? And this guy's going, oh, well, we're outside at the east entrance. Right, I'll join you there. Yep. And he walks through the east entrance, to, he leaves the building to then bring everyone back in. I mean, yep. it was insane. This was a military operation, which is why, of course, they're all being charged with sedition. Yeah, right. Right. Before we go any further, yeah. do you know what sedition is? No, but it sounds really kind of, to me, it sounds like a place you go to while you're waiting to go to hell. <laughs> It's like the waiting room for help. I believe that's sedition. perdition. Oh, um, I like it. Perdition. You don't get charged for perdition <laughs> um, or limbo. Uh, yeah. Right, so sedition. Let's. Uh, we should break that down because yes. it's a really important thing to look at. Sedition is the overt conduct such as speech and organisation toward rebellion against the established order. Okay. All right, so it includes subversion of a constitution and incitement of discontent towards or insurrection against established authority. Okay. Right, so the established order was the US Congress trying to decide who was going to be president and vice president. Now, the overt act against it Mm. was storming the Capitol to stop them. Now, in Australia, we had sedition on the books. It was a crime. It was part of the Counter-Terrorist Act. But what they did is it was removed in 2011. It was repealed and the word sedition was replaced with urging violence. Okay. Because sedition can – because it's – speech and organised mm. action towards a rebellion, you've got the problem with dissent becomes part of sedition and you don't want that. Mm. Dissent's okay, sedition is not. But in America, sedition's been huge. It's like we had that sedition come into our books, what, 2009, yeah. off the books 2011? In the US, it's been going since like 1801. Yeah, right. As soon as they had their revolution, they then went, we don't want another revolution, so sedition's a crime. So sedition has been boiling over on the books there. It's been on the books. It's been off the books. The right of free speech came in, which then led to the right of free speech does not include calling fire in a packed theatre. Oh, okay. If you follow the rules of freedom of speech where you're allowed to say anything, you could stand up in the middle of a packed theatre and start screaming fire. Right. Even if there wasn't a fire. Well, no, you can't do that. Right. That is now being a nuisance. So the whole thing is sedition is basically support of rebellion, which is exactly what the Proud Boys and a lot of the other groups that were associated with them at the Capitol were involved in. A lot of people were just there to protest Mm. and got caught up in this the milieu. So Of course. And that was the big thing with the Proud Boys. That's why they're being charged with sedition. Will Trump get charged with sedition? Probably not. Unlikely. Yeah, totally. Unlikely. But as we said in the last episode, there are lots of charges we can lay these Yeah, and I think for me, I mean, the Proud Boy stuff is very interesting, but I think what I found very interesting as well over the past week was the Republican Barry Loudermilk, who was leading a group of people on the tour of the Capitol complex mm. the day before the attack. Now, interestingly, when he was questioned about this, he said he never did it. And then, and then they found footage of him actually doing it. Now, oh, that! Oh, you tour. mean that? Um, oh, that guy wearing the military oh, gear. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, a couple of things here. COVID was happening at the time, so they weren't actually taking tourists around. Of course not. The Republicans usually they don't do these kinds of tours themselves. No. They have like other people. You to have do an Asha, or you have one of your interns do yeah. it. Yeah. And what was the most interesting out of all of the vision? And it's quite chilling watching them take photos of entry points, stairwells, security points, Mm -hmm. 
And you cannot help but think they're casing the joint. Now, who were the people that he was showing around? Now, th- that's the thing. They don't really know. They were actually there on January 6th. Yeah, but yes. they don't know who they were. No. Ooh. They've traced them to January 6th. They are yet to, from what I've read and heard, they're yet to like ascertain whether they broke into. They haven't formally identified them. Yes, but they could have been the scouts. They could have been scouts. Well, that is the other point here mm. is, yes, I can be. You know, again, if you look at the way the Proud Boys operated, yeah. one of the things you know, the reassess, there's great footage of them literally pulling back and looking at the damage they've done yep. and then going, hang on, what's going on over there? There's only three cops standing there in front of that gate. Let's go Let's go to that gate and start rolling it up over there. Yeah. Right. So everyone's pouring assets. You would have had guys that went, if you go up that flight of stairs, yes. you get into this area. So, yeah, definitely those scouts probably wouldn't have been part of the command structure. They would have been advising the command structure. Yeah. And so what they've said is the, the committee said that some of the individuals on the tour did join the rally and one of the men on the tour had made disturbing threats against members of Congress. Yeah. I mean, there's an a interesting story about a congressman who's a Republican congressman who mm. was walking through the building and he saw a uh, father and son getting a tour from a congressman's intern. And what was really interesting was he said the father turned around and pointed at him and went, he's a traitor. He doesn't believe in Trump's son. He is a traitor. That's the kind of person we're here to destroy. Oh, my God. And it's like the congressman is – I can't remember his name, but he basically turned around and said the horrifying thing was that kid is growing up in that household. Yeah, Where exactly. they're basically being told – if they don't believe in Trump, they deserve to die. Yeah. And this is the problem. And this is going to be a massive problem for the American population, for yep. the United States, over the next sort of months and years. So I think when we look at it from a securities perspective, I mean, look, Loudermilk said, I did not know those people. I, which to be honest, like, if, if, you t- if you give him the benefit okay. of the doubt. Yeah. Would a red flag not be raised when they're taking photos of stairwells? Yeah. Because why would you? Yeah. <laughs> right. That, that, again, when you say, oh, I didn't know who they were. Yeah. Um, well, then why did you give them the tour? Yeah, Why exactly. was it so important well, that you had to give them the even tour? Even if you gave them the tour, why Why would you not go, hang on a minute, they're not taking photos of things that most normal tourists take photos of. Yeah. I think that's a red flag. And you even see people walking around and then they're just standing there taking photos of like security checkpoints. It is, it is mm. really chill video and I have to think that from that there would be some changes made. Look, there are going to be some massive security changes in America, not just at the Capitol. I mean, the interesting thing now and we've discussed this a lot, you know, that classic quote from my dad, before the internet every village had an idiot. Now with the internet those idiots get to talk to each other. Yeah. Back in the day when you had one of these groups like Proud Boys, you know, Waco, Texas, mm. all of those weird little cults and militias that would disappear up into the hills and then get surrounded by yeah. the ATO and the FBI. They're now everywhere. Yep. They're not in one little farmhouse in Montana. They're everywhere. And as Joe Big said, we can be anyone standing next to you. Yeah. And, and I think- that's the way, that's at a security paradigm for the United States that is very, very difficult to combat. Well, I think that kind of goes to the heart of the issues they had, you know, with the terrorist threats that were made post-September 11th. Yeah. That, you know, it could be anyone. And there was this whole idea of the lone wolf. Like Mm. the lone wolf was not an idea that anyone thought about in like Western democratic culture. The other thing is the big threat to the United States at the moment Mm. is not an external threat. It's not the threat of ISIS or Al-Qaeda. No. The real threat at the moment is internal. It's the right wing that's now becoming a, a massive, violent threat. Yes, and we we saw it like, you know, this week, Victoria banned the swastika. So now that you can no longer- The swastika? Um, the swastika. <laughs> you can now- Swastika is okay. You don't need to put a schw on it. Swastika. No, swastika. Swastika. Swast- no, there's no S. There's no H. It's, it's SW. a swastika. No, it's a swastika. Swastika. <laughs> swastika. You're a drunken Nazi and you've got to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that thing, yeah. that symbol is now banned in Victoria. Now New South Wales has now put that forward into our parliament as well yep. to kind of ban it as well. Look, I have an issue with banning symbols. I don't think you should. Well, yeah, there is that problem. By banning it, you then – any prohibition encourages an underground or yep. a black market. Yes, right? yes. So in making a symbol illegal, you are encouraging people but also I feel to like if, operate behind the scenes. But I also feel like if people decide to wear T-shirts and tattoos that have the swatch sticker then it kind of shows you exactly who they are. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> you kind of go, oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's the Southern Cross tattoo on the ankle. It's like, yeah. oh, no. Oh, okay. oh, oh. Cronella rights. Oh, yeah. Nice. Good for you. <laughs> well done. 
Nice stuff. Oh, yeah. Gee. Yeah. So it's very interesting, this whole ideology, like the right wing ideology, proud boys, yeah. pro white. This is one massive security threat yeah. to the United States. Another massive security threat to the United States is what's going on in state houses, in the, mm. the different state legislatures, in that the GOP, and a lot of people are saying that what they did with Trump was just a dress rehearsal. Yeah. And they're now finessing what they're going to do at the next election because one of the things, and it's the difference between the way our election works and the way their elections work. Our elections, one, we use a piece of paper. Two, we do it on a Saturday. Three, everyone gets a a sausage at the end, right? Yeah, (laughs) and and people are happy about that. (laughs) And you have to vote. Yes. So we do get a good cross-section of the population because most of us vote. And the ones that don't, it's a very, very small number. Now, what's going on? I mean, all the stuff with the Dominion voting machines, which has caught Rupert Murdoch. There's that theory that the Chinese government may have hacked into the Dominion voting machines through a smart thermostat. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So the DOJ, well, it wasn't the DOJ, it was Jeffrey Clark, who was this pro-Trump. He was kind of a little known lawyer, yep. not even like one of the big dogs of the DOJ. And he was like, you know what? I've read this on the internet. I read it, yeah. <laughs> and so I was on Reddit. <laughs> I was on Reddit. I read this and he followed with a request for an intelligence community briefing on the matter. And Trump said if the DOJ doesn't follow it through, he's going to fire them all and that he's going to let this guy, Jeffrey Jeffrey Clark become the head. And replace it with Vinny and Joe Boy from, yeah. from down in Tribeca. Now, Jeffrey Clark's been – the FBI are now all over him. Of course they are. They're, they are searching his home. I think we're going to learn a bit more about that. Now, a couple of things, interesting things about the Dominion voting machines. I mean, mm. the fact that, oh, the Chinese have in, interfered with our voting machines. I mean, it's easy to say, isn't While it? Ivanka Trump was given – given by the Chinese mm. government a patent for an electronic voting machine to be produced in China to be used – in a US election. So it's like, um, for you guys to complain about voting machines, one, that's a bit strange. Yeah. Two, it's now put Rupert and Lockie Murdoch in the frame for some litigious experiences simply because they were promoting this myth that, uh, well, Fox were promoting this myth yeah. that there was something going on with that. And basically, the DOJ have turned around and gone, we want to talk to Rupert and Lockie about this because we think this could be a personal issue. Now, whether it is, whether it isn't, I think a lot of the time when people go, oh, we've got Rupert, yeah. Good yeah. luck. He's, I mean, the guy's probably got a suit made out of lawyer skin. Um, but <laughs> the thing about it is what the DOJ are doing and the way it works in the US as opposed to Australia, in Australia our boundary lines are drawn up by the Australian Electoral Commission, yeah. which is a bureaucracy, right? Yep. Now, admittedly, the AEC- They're have, very funny on Twitter. They're great. I love their Twitter. Uh, yeah. Their Twitter action is superb. Yeah. Now, as a lot of people said, you know, maybe you should run elections and stop tweeting. It's like, you know what? I think there's only one or two people on the Twitter account. I yeah. think the rest- <laughs> them are actually busy. Yeah. But, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about how the AEC were compromised by the last government. Eh, I don't really know about that. But what's interesting is they determine the boundaries of yep. our electorates. Yep. In the US, the winner of the state election determines the boundaries. Now, if you look at- Which is crazy. The way the, the GOP, because they, mm. they throw their money at state legislature and that way they can flip districts. They literally flip districts by just redrawing the line to yeah. add, let's just add this little street which will give us enough Republicans in this district to tip the district to our favour and we win the House. So there's that. So there's doing a lot of that sort of stuff. The other thing that happens is with the presidential election, even though you vote, like so you say you voted for Joe Biden and I voted for Trump. Mm. Oh, what fantasy world are we living in now? I know. Right. So our votes count only at the state level. So that will determine who that state believes should be the president. And then there are electors for the Electoral College that are – you vote for the electors for the Electoral College as well. This Mm. is how – Absolutely. It's so crazy, the that whole electoral college, gets. which because, you know, quite often the person who wins a popular vote does not become president. So they'll have the most votes, but yeah. they don't become now, president because of a, the electoral college. But that's a really interesting thing because when you look back on it, it's only five times in American history where that's happened. Yeah. Right. One was Gore. Yep. The most recent ones were Gore and Clinton. Yeah. Right, Hillary Clinton, where she won by three million votes. Yes. But because the districts have been drawn the way which they are. Which is crazy. It's but, so crazy. Yeah. The other thing was, I think it was the Michigan electoral college where where the GOP electors were hiding in the state house overnight doing the, you know, Jimmy Smith's that 
great yes. episode of West Wing with yeah. Jimmy Smith. They're doing a Jimmy Smith to surprise everyone and come in and change their votes because you take an oath to say that you will vote for whoever the state determines should be the, yeah. the president and vice president. Well, they were going to do the, ha-ha, we're here and we're changing our minds. We're, that becomes a faithless elector. Now, the thing was, that all went tits up. It didn't work. But this is the thing. They're, they're currently working out, like, there's this hour-long conversation. Mm. Well, no, it's not. An hour-long diatribe from Trump over the phone to the Georgia legislature going, these are the number of votes I need. This is how you're going to get the electors. You're going to do all of this sort of stuff to change it. Yeah, and also in one phone conversation, Richard Donahue, which is one of Rosen's deputies, testified that Trump directed the Justice Department to just say the election was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the Republican. Republican congressman. Exactly. Now, <laughs> here comes I, I, I've saved this one because here comes my great quote from Rudy Giuliani. I love Rudy. Which Giuliani. goes beyond where's the coke and alcohol? Right. <laughs> uh, other than that quote, which is my very favorite one. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't drinking. This is the quote from Rudy. We've got lots of theories. We just don't have the evidence. Oh my god. That gosh. is he's that is a That is quote. Reddit. That is basically the basis of Reddit. <laughs> exactly. All right. So essentially Rudy Giuliani has admitted that look, we had all these different ideas. We just didn't have anything to back it up. Yeah. And this is what's becoming more and more apparent as this goes through is the fact that basically these guys were spitballing to try and overthrow an election. Yep. And I think one of the big things that has really come out today and we're going and it's part of the reason why the next iterations of the committee hearings are going to take so long yeah. is the Alex Holder who was the director of the Trump doco and he had access to Trump and his family before and after. Oh my. So gosh. and they all gave interviews and apparently he has explosive footage because he was following Trump for 3 months in yeah. the build up to the election yep. and then post the election. So apparently he has a lot of stuff on film. So they're pouring through this stuff and the new documents. And also another really interesting thing is since the Jan 6 committee hearings have begun, yep. they have found a flood of new tips coming through. Oh, look, I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of people that are going, it's too late to get a pardon. So if I... Rats are jumping. Rats yeah, are jumping. The, yeah, the rats. I mean, when... <laughs> Uh, again, as we said in the last episode, when Betsy DeVos went, oh, oh, oh I, I thought it was wrong. As soon as she did that, it's like you know that yep. everyone is going to be desperately trying to get a plea. Yeah. So Alex Holder, who's the director of this doco, has basically given a deposition behind closed doors. It'll be interesting to see what comes out of that and what footage he has. I'm just waiting to see the footage of Don Jr. going, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, why does daddy love me? <laughs> I feel like that's the subtext of every one of his videos. I think that is basically, why doesn't my daddy love me? I mean, and the thing is, on the flip side of this, mm. the Trump supporters are in meltdown at the moment. I mean, the whole thing of every time. If I hear one more person go, yeah, but what about BLM riots? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, that's the great thing. As Joe Big said in the thing, we could be Antifa. No, you're definitely not Antifa because Antifa weren't at that. They weren't interested in that. Also, Antifa barely exists. A lot of yeah. times they're just like blaming everything on well, Antifa who it, aren't even actually there. Exactly. It's that, I mean, Antifa is kind of like the left-wing version of the Illuminati. It's this mm. mysterious group of people that I'm like, who everything. are they? <laughs> but the other interesting thing is I read another great article. It was a professor, a history mm. professor, who went to the conservative convention down in Florida. Yeah. And he's looking at the new brand of conservatives coming through. If you think the guys that are in power now are bad, mm. holy smoke, these kids are crazy. Yep. Right? They're all sort of mid-20s to mid-30s. They're all highly qualified. And this guy said he spent three days down there and he met up with a lot of old conservative friends that he had and he met up with a lot of new conservative friends mm. and he said they're all really lovely people they're very charming they're very personable they're great fun to be around yep. until they get up and they start speaking and it's stuff like you know big business hates us and by the way, they talk about, and it's a great thing, they call it, was it capital surveillance? Mm. Right. So big business and all the big business, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, or you know, all of the big businesses as they call it, they're all tech and they control its corporate surveillance or, or capital, capitalist surveillance where they're using their capitalist power mm. to watch us. Right. right. So they've basically gone, so we're now the enemy of big business. And it's like, guys, how you're all millionaires and billionaires and you all sort of – my favourite was one guy, one of the speakers turned around and said, find one Fortune 500 CEO that isn't woke 
And it's like, I think I can find that pretty quickly. They're all narcissists. They're not work. Yeah, but the whole thing is, it's like there's this, you'd sort of think that, wow, these guys would be looking what's going on in the GOP Mm. and go, yeah, this isn't working. We've got to find a better road or a a more centrist way to move forward. They've gone, no, double down. Those guys have lost the plot. The the last generation have got it wrong. They're too woke. We've got to be even more right wing. So the GOP is pushing more extremists, which is not a pretty thing to watch. No, I mean, we saw it in Europe. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times we've seen like people come very close to getting into power in a lot of European countries who have extreme right wing views. Yeah, it's the populist thing. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I mean, with this New York Times video of Joe Biggs and the Proud Boys, what's really interesting about that is you watch certain footage of the Proud Boys earlier on when yeah. they first started appearing and how it was all brawls in the street. Yeah. Well, you know, without breaking the Godwin law, that's what the brown shorts were doing in the late 20s and early 30s in yeah. Germany. Yeah. So it's like you can sort of see this thing where it's like, you know, history, guys, look at your history because mm. it's happening again. It's happening in the preeminent power of the planet. Mm. And we are watching in real time the collapse of an empire. I really, I, I firmly believe that this is, America is kind of on the ropes at the moment. Yeah, and I think that that's why a lot of Republicans like Liz Cheney have very much invested in this yeah. because the process itself needs to be looked at. And I think mm. there's a lot of stuff that's going on at this kind of level in the US that really needs to be observed closely. Yeah, and I, and I think Republicans and Democrats are looking at this stuff, and they're quite fearful. I mean, this is this not the fall of democracy, but like essentially, you know, a former sitting president could have done some pretty really, outrageous things. I mean, I, I tweeted it, and you'll find it at Icebike Podcast on Twitter. Mm. Um, it was that just a photo of Bill Clinton, and it's like you know, I think sedition and insurrection should be investigated as closely as a blowjob. And it's like, yeah, we really should be doing that. It's, yes. that's what I find fascinating about it. Was Bill Clinton? We it, turned the world upside down over a blowjob, like it, it was crazy. He got a wristy, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> and and my God, we've got to stop everything. And it's like, hang on, someone. Just just stormed yes. your seat of federal government. This is a problem. But you see it quite a lot. And again, because I'm always tooling around on Twitter and places like that, you see a lot of, oh, of course they're delaying it because they've got to invent more videos. And it's like, you, you can't invent this stuff, guys. No, you I, can't. It's kind of the gift that keeps on giving. Look, we will come back to this, circle back to it, because there I is no doubt that this stuff is going to get better. Now, I do have to say, yes. I've got a little gift oh. from one of our listeners. Really? Yes. Oh, you got a gift? Yeah, well, oh, you don't. That's uh, nice. they, they have a candle company, the Covert Candle Company, and they sent me this beautiful candle, and it smells delicious. And with this note, the note was... Michelle, we're gifting you because candles aren't safe in blanket forts. <laughs> David, we're looking at you. <laughs> my, my blanket fort is fireproof. <laughs> and also, your blanket fort probably needs a freshen up. <laughs> yeah, it really. Actually, it, yeah, it's getting a bit manny and a bit manky. Um, <laughs> it needs a candle. Anyway, Covert Candle Company, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I like the name too, Covert Candle Company. I know, please. Right? Covert Candle Company, Covert they- Candle Company, Covert Candle Company. Can I have a Covert Candle, please? <laughs> I'll put it in. I've got a special thing that means it won't kill me. (laughs) Anyway, lots to discuss again coming up next week. I don't know if we'll continue with this because I think we're going to have a bit of a break. We need to have a bit of a. We need to have a bit of. We we need to step back from this. We do. I'm feeling. I'm feeling a bit sort of manky, and I I need a candle. (laughs) (laughs) He's just so jealous. I need a candle, and I need to calm. And some more interesting things about submarines that I'd like to talk about. Oh, submarines! I'm so excited. Let's dig deep. Let's like underground. Let's dive. We'll dive. Dive. We'll dive. We'll do a deep dive. Dive, yes. Deep dive. Deep dive.